this is only the worst case with Cape Town Emergency Medicine. Here today to talk about assisted ventilation using a self-inflating bag valve mask device. The first thing we're going to look at today is our equipment. In essence, we require a device to interface with the patient's face, a mask, a device to deliver the breaths, which is our self-inflating bag ventilator, and then a way to connect to wall oxygen, which would be oxygen tubing. If we start with the ventilation device itself, oxygen tubing should be connected at the oxygen port at the rear of the device, and then connected to wall oxygen at high flow of at least 15 liters per minute, or enough to keep the reservoir bag inflated at all times. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to remove this now, but please don't remove it during actual ventilation of the patient. The reservoir bag attaches to the rear of the self-inflating bag device and should be filled with high flow oxygen at all times to ensure delivery of high concentration of oxygen to the patient. The next part of the device is the self-inflating bag, which is depressed to deliver air to the patient and then would draw in air from the reservoir bag and atmosphere when it self-expands. The final part is the ventilator port, which would be connected to the mask, which is then placed on the patient's face. A series of one-way valves ensures delivery of high-flow oxygen to the patient while preventing rebreathing of patient exhaled gases into the system itself. There are many different kinds of face masks. An example would be one like this with a hard plastic chassis which is lined with soft silicon to give a seal to the face. An alternative design is a hard plastic chassis mated to an inflatable cuff which can seat to the face in a dynamic way conforming to the contours. The first step now would be to select the appropriate size for the patient. This is done by placing the narrow end of the mask at the bridge of the nose and then allowing it to lie on the face. If it is the correct size, the lower end of the mask will come to rest between the lower lip and the chin. A mask which is too large and overlaps the chin will result in an air leak. And a mask which is too small, such as this one, when laid down will not cover the mouth and therefore effective ventilation would be impossible. If you are a single rescuer, you would often have to be able to secure this to the face of the patient with one hand while ventilating with the other, necessitating a good grip of the mask on the patient's face. For demonstration purposes, I will connect this later and demonstrate the classic CE grip. The CE grip is so named for the components of the grip used to secure the device to the face. The C denotes the index and thumb that surrounds the mask and secures it to the face and the E, these three fingers that rests against the mandible of the patient. It's important to note that these fingers should not be resting on the soft tissue as that would close off the airway, but should be on the bony margin of the mandible. Once your CE grip is correct, all you need to do is to close your hand to make sure that the mask is properly seated against the face. To ventilate the patient, the mask is connected to the self-inflating bag I suggest that you grip the bag with your hand from beneath to suggest inadvertent slipping from your hand as you are ventilating the patient. Seat the mask correctly and apply your CE grip. Now simply depress the self-inflating bag to ventilate your patients. Most adult patients should be ventilated about 10 times per minute or one breath approximately every 6 to 8 seconds. Make sure that your inhalation phase is faster than your exhalation phase, but not so fast as to cause injury. If the patient's mask is well sealed and the airway is correctly positioned, but the movement of air remains a problem, considering inserting an upper airway adjunct device to facilitate your ventilation. In the case of two rescuers being available, you may want to consider a two-handed grip with one rescuer applying the mask to the face and a second rescuer doing the ventilation. The first way you could do this is to simply reproduce the CE grip with the other hand using a double CE grip that allows a very secure grip of the mask to the face. Alternatively, lay the sides of the mask against your thenar eminences and then grip behind the angle of the mandible in a modified jaw thrust maneuver. 
at this point your assistant would connect the band and ventilate while you maintain the crib. Consider switching roles if fatigue sets in. And that's it. Correct use of a self-inflating band belt mass device for assisted ventilation in patients with